Trespass to Land is the fifth of the intentional torts taught in a 1L torts class, but it is the first of the intentional torts affecting property, in this case, land or real property. The tort is intended to protect the property owner's right to exclusive possession in his property. In other words, the tort exists to ensure a property owner has a peaceful means to both exclude others from his real property and to enforce that right in the courts. Welcome to Roman Matter. This lesson will explore the intentional tort of trespass to land. We will cover how the tort is defined, examine its elements, and go over a few examples. A word of caution. This course is intended to answer academic questions only. These materials are intended to reinforce your legal education or to satisfy the curious layperson. They are not legal advice. And with that, let's get to it. The Restatement Second of Torts, Section 158, defines the circumstances under which liability or intentional intrusions on land can attach. It provides that, quote, One is subject to liability to another for trespass, irrespective of whether he thereby causes harm to any legally protected interest of the other if he intentionally, a, enters land in the possession of the other, causes a thing or person to do so, or b, remains on the land, or C. Fails to remove from the land a thing which he is under a duty to remove. For the purposes of an exam, we can state this definition more succinctly. We can say that, to establish a prima facie case for trespass to land, the plaintiff must show that the defendant acted intentionally to physically invade the plaintiff's real property. Let's dig into the critical pieces composing the definition and unpack some clarifications and qualifiers to this simple concept. This requirement is integral to all intentional torts. The tortfeasor must have acted with intent. The Restatement Second of Torts, Section 1, states that, quote, A person acts with the intent to produce a consequence if A. The person acts with the purpose of producing that consequence or B. The person acts knowing that the consequence is substantially certain to result. Liability does not require harm. It is unnecessary for harm or damage to the real property for liability to attach to the trespassing actor. The Restatement Second of Torts, Section 163, describes liability resulting from intended intrusions causing no harm. It states that, quote, One who intentionally enters land in the possession of another is subject to liability to the possessor for a trespass, although his presence on the land causes no harm to the land, its possessor, or to any thing or person in whose security the possessor has a legally protected interest. In this civil tort, intent is established when the defendant is shown to have acted to cause the physical invasion. Intent does not turn on the defendant purposefully or knowingly trespassing upon another's land, only that the defendant intend to commit the act resulting in the physical invasion. The Restatement Second of Torts, Section 164, clarifies liability resulting from intrusions under mistake. It provides that, quote, One who intentionally enters land in the possession of another is subject to liability to the possessor of the land as a trespasser, although he acts under a mistaken belief of law or fact, however reasonable, not induced by the conduct of the possessor, that he, a, is in possession of the land or entitled to it, or b. has the consent of the possessor or of a third person who has the power to give consent on the possessor's behalf, or c. has some other privilege to enter or remain on the land. For law students, this is relevant because an exam fact pattern may try to throw the reader off by stating that the defendant did not realize he was crossing the plaintiff's property line. However, that lack of knowledge is immaterial. All that matters is that the defendant intended to walk across the plaintiff's property line without his consent, thereby committing a trespass to land. The intent requirement is similar to strict liability in a criminal offense. The intent required in this tort is similar to strict liability, but with caveats. Obviously, we are discussing a tort and not a criminal offense so don't confuse the intent required here with the more complicated concept of mens rea found in criminal law. 
But for ease of analysis, we can say that trespass to land is very much like a strict liability crime found under the criminal law. But as we said, there is a caveat to that statement. Section 164, Comment B states in part that, quote, an actor is not liable for a merely harmless intrusion on land under a mistake induced by the conduct of the possessor. The restatement's illustrations clarify this comment. Mistakes by the actor leading to a trespass to land will permit liability to attach to him unless the mistake occurred because the actor had a reasonable belief induced by the possessor's conduct. For example, A owns Black Acre and hires B to cut timber from Black Acre. Instead, B mistakenly, but in good faith, cuts timber from White Acre, owned by C. In this instance, B is liable to C. In contrast, Section 164, Illustration 15, provides an example. It states that A, mistakenly, but reasonably believing that B is murdering his wife, breaks into B's house to prevent the supposed murder. A's entry is not a trespass. The difference between the two is that in the former example, A's conduct did not induce B to cut timber on C's land. In the later example, B's behavior induced A to think that B was in the process of killing his wife. It is B's inducement, it was his conduct in the second example, that excuses A's liability to him. Physical invasion can be achieved in three ways. We will examine each of them. Trespass by Physical Invasion Trespass requires a physical invasion of the plaintiff's property. This is satisfied when the defendant does something as simple as walking upon the plaintiff's land without his consent. It can also be satisfied when a round fired from a defendant hunter's firearm crosses into a plaintiff landowner's real property. Likewise, should a defendant's camera drone fly across the plaintiff's land, a trespass to land will have occurred. In short, all that is required is a physical invasion. Trespass by Failure to Leave A physical trespass can also occur when the actor fails to leave the property after his license or privilege to be on the land has been revoked or expired. Trespass by Failing to Remove Something Despite a Duty to Do So a physical trespass can also occur when a defendant fails to remove something which he is under a duty to remove. For example, a landowner hired a contractor to lay pipe across his property which required the contractor to survey land and place markers. The contractor completed the job but failed to remove the markers which were then concealed by high grass. Sometime later, the landowner was nearly injured when his riding mower hit the marking stakes. Under these facts, the contractor is likely to be held liable for trespass. He had a duty to remove the stakes and failed to do so. While this also sounds like negligence, in the absence of damages to the landowner, he could pursue an action based on trespass to land. Alright, let's take a look at a few more examples here, specifically section 158A and B, respectively. Patrick owns 40 acres of woodland in rural Michigan. His neighbor, Al, owns the 20 acres directly west of his place. Dylan is an avid deer hunter. Deer season has just opened up and Dylan is eager to get out there and bag a couple servants. Dylan started his day at Al's place. He and Al stalked the land surrounding his cabin for a few miles and made their way to their deer stands. Al was sure that he was still on his land. In fact, he knew that his land was separated from Patrick's 40 acres by a stream. But it didn't occur to Al, nor Dylan for that matter, that the stream bed that they'd crossed an hour ago was that boundary line. Under these facts, Dylan and Al are trespassing on Patrick's land. Both guys intentionally walked from Al's land onto Patrick's without Pat's consent. It is immaterial that they didn't realize that they'd crossed the stream bed and with it the boundary between the plots of land. Which is to say, mistake is no defense to trespass to land. Let's change the fact pattern of our prior example. Patrick and Al are friends with Dylan. The three buddies have hunted together on Dylan's 40 acres every deer season for the past 10 years. On day one of deer season this year, the trio headed out to enjoy what would have been their 11th season together. But this time, the trio ends up in an argument. It doesn't really matter over what. What matters is that it ended with Dylan telling Pat and Al to get off his land. 
Legally speaking, Dylan had just revoked his friend's license to be on his property. Pat and Al storm off, but instead of heading off Dylan's property, they doubled back and made their way to the deer stands they have been using for the past 10 years. Under these facts, Pat and Dylan have committed the intentional tort of trespass to land and are liable to Dylan for the tort. Al granted the former buddies a license to be on his land, and he revoked it following the argument. They refused to leave Al's property, and in failing to do so, and failing to do so in a, both a reasonable time and manner, they have committed the tort of trespass to land. All right, let's sum it up. A trespass to land requires the actor to intentionally act to cause a physical invasion of another's real property. So long as the physical invasion was done intentionally by the actor, he will likely be held liable to the holder of the real property. That's it for this lesson. If you found it helpful, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments below and check back often for more content. As always, thank you for visiting Roman Manor and have a lovely day.